Bangor. From the great north woods to the rockbound coast and streaming live in HD worldwide at foxbangor.com, more people choose Good Morning Maine. Coming up on today's show, a Wabanaki group welcomed Green Atlantic and Alaskan Indigenous community members as part of a cultural tourism exchange. Plus, two local students competing at Skills USA landed a pair of gold medals. In our top story, a jury has been selected for a murder trial slated to start in Arusta County next week. Your local news right now. Good morning. Welcome into Good Morning Maine. I'm Joe Cortez. Thanks for tuning in this morning. We got a little bit of fog out there. We should see it dwindle off around 10 o'clock today. Let's get a first check of our forecast with meteorologist Devin Biggs. He joins us now, and I've heard that it's his birthday. So happy birthday, Devin. Hey, Joe. Thank you very much. Hope you're having a great Friday. Things looking pretty decent out there. We're watching a little bit of patchy fog developing in a few areas this morning, especially along the coast. So this on for the south and west of Bangor. Other areas seeing a little bit of fog as well this morning. We'll see that burning off as the sun rises, but we're also watching some clouds that have also developed as well. We had some rain showers that passed through last night and have since fizzled out. We're going to be watching the coast to see if a few rain showers try to get together today, but I think most of us will be staying dry nonetheless. Zooming things out, though, we have a cold front that is currently moving through. Temperatures will stay cooler in the 70s for the next several days. So overall, not too bad moving forward. Here's future cast for today. It tries to get a few showers going. That might be a little bit of a stretch. But otherwise, so the big story will be later on tonight and tomorrow morning as clouds start to move in from the south going toward the north. Otherwise, so the winds won't be too bad again today. Maybe mainly at around 5 to 10 miles per hour. Out of the northwest, going toward the south and east, maybe a little bit more gusts along the coast, especially as we head towards early Saturday morning as that next system begins to approach. But for today, though, not too bad out there. Upper 70s on the way under a partly cloudy sky, with the north wind getting up to about 5 to 10 miles per hour. Later on tonight, middle 50s for overnight low, mostly cloudy sky, with the north wind getting up to about 5 to 10 miles per hour. For tomorrow, upper 70s, mostly cloudy, a slight chance for a thunderstorm late, especially to the south and east, with the north wind getting up to about 5 to 10 miles per hour. In your hourly forecast moving forward, mixture of clouds and sun, temperatures in the upper 70s. Your full five-day forecast is coming up. Joe? Thank you, Devin. First up this morning, a jury has been selected for a murder trial slated to start in Aroostia County next week. Bobby Nightingale of Prescott is accused of killing 25-year-old Alan Curtis and 51-year-old Roger Ellis. Their bodies were found in a truck on Route 227 in Castle Hill, Back in August of 2019, Nightingale was later indicted on burglary, robbery, and possession of a firearm by a prohibited person in connection with a home invasion in Presque Isle. He was also charged with criminal threatening with a dangerous weapon stemming from another incident in Castle Hill. It took two days before a jury was able to be seated. His murder trial is scheduled to begin on Monday. The Hancock County Grand Jury has indicted a Portland man for murder. 35-year-old Raymond Lester was arrested in connection with a fatal hit and run at Acadia National Park in June. 35-year-old Nicole McKemmy died in the incident in Winter Harbor. Police say Lester had been in a relationship with McKemmy. He was arrested in Mexico and returned to Maine. Two others were indicted in connection with a high-speed chase that went through two counties. 32-year-old Christopher Vasey and 37-year-old Brandy Milan, both of Bucksport, were arrested after police attempted to make a routine traffic stop and hold him. It turned into a police pursuit that finally ended in Southwest Harbor. They were indicted on several charges, including eluding an officer, driving to endanger, unlawful possession of drugs, and criminal mischief. The grand jury also indicted the driver involved in a crash on Bangor Road in Ellsworth. In September, police say 26-year-old Raquim Robinson of Bar Harbor crossed the center line and hit a car driven by 80-year-old Robert Gallant of Old Town. Gallant's car rolled over into a ditch and he later died at the hospital. Police say Robinson's car spun around and hit another vehicle driven by 67-year-old Lewis Pinkham of Millbridge. Robinson was indicted for driving to endanger. Governor Janet Mills has directed her energy office to intervene in opposition to central Maine powers filing for an electricity rate increase. CMP requested a three-year increase that would raise electric bills on an average of roughly $10 per month and $120 a year. The governor argues the rate increase is not warranted during a time of already high electricity rates. Now, in a statement, the governor said in part, quote, 
While improving our electric system is critical to ensuring a strong grid, the timing of these costs must be balanced against the high costs, including already high energy prices that are hurting Maine people and businesses right now. CMP pursuing this filing at this time is not the best interest of Maine's people, and we oppose it. Governor Mills has also announced that she will direct the governor's energy office to oppose an expected filing from Versant Power, which recently announced that it intends to request a similar rate increase. Roads have been reopened following a culvert failure in Jackman Tuesday. Route 6 and 15 were impacted and required a 143-mile detour as of Wednesday because of culvert failure. Part of the travel lane was washed away. Late Wednesday night, the Maine Department of Transportation gave an update that these routes are now back open to all vehicle traffic. A Wabanaki organization hosted indigenous colleagues from Greenland and Alaska with a focus on indigenous culture tourism. Dylan Holloway was there and has the details. Wabanaki Public Health and Wellness welcomed Greenlandic and Alaskan Indigenous community members to Millinocket Thursday as part of a cultural tourism exchange. The exchange was organized by the University of Southern Maine's Department of Tourism and Hospitality in collaboration with Wabanaki Public Health and Wellness. What we're doing is welcoming people to our places of healing and recovery. Also, our places of um, cultural tourism in the future. What we know is connection to our properties, to our land, to our culture is healing for our people. USM students and faculty were also present at the event. Tracy Misho says it was a great learning experience for her students. How to respect uh, indigenous cultures, how do we communicate that and make those connections, but um, a personal life-changing experience for every single one of them. Following a ceremony and tour at the Health and Wellness Center, visitors were invited to the gathering place where they enjoyed presentations, lunch, and a tour of the medicine plant walking trail. So that's what this is all about. Indigenous people from all over this continent and others to come together and ask the question, how do we heal? How do we thrive? And how do we think about sharing our culture and what heals us with others? Reporting from Millinocket, I'm Dylan Holloway for ABC7 and Fox 22. We're seven minutes past the top of the hour. Coming up next on Good Morning Maine, the United States Department of Agriculture announced $3.5 million is heading to nine rural Maine health care facilities. Plus, hear how the drought is having a negative impact on some blueberry farms. But first, here's a look at your forecast. A high of 78 degrees. That sunshine should be moving in around 10 o'clock. You'll see a lot of cloud coverage out there today. Tonight, mostly cloudy skies. Temperatures dropping down to the low 50s. And tomorrow, we're back up in the high 70s with mostly cloudy skies. Inflation, a broken supply chain, and high gas prices. Mainers everywhere are facing tough decisions about rising costs. Growing up as part of a small family business in Leeds, I learned what a struggling economy does to small businesses, jobs, and to working class people. And serving as a Marine in Afghanistan and Iraq taught me to stand strong for what's right in the face of adversity. I'm Jared Golden, and that's why in Congress, I'm an independent voice for you, taking on my own party to stand up for Maine families. I was the only Democrat to vote against trillions of dollars of President Biden's agenda because I knew it would make inflation worse. I have stood with law enforcement against defunding the police. I support cutting the gas tax and increasing domestic oil production. I'm working to lower prescription drug costs and standing firm against any cuts to Social Security and Medicare. I'll always be an independent fighter for you. I'm Jared Golden, and this is my family. I approve this message because when it comes to doing what's right for your family, I'll never back down. It's time for the biggest sale of the year on the Sleep Number 360 Smart Bed. Why choose proven quality sleep from Sleep Number? Because proven quality sleep is vital to our health and wellness, only the Sleep Number 360 Smart Bed keeps you cool, then senses and effortlessly adjusts for your best sleep. It tells you exactly how well you slept, your sleep IQ score. Our smart sleepers get 28 minutes more restful sleep per night, so you can be your best for yourself and those you care about most. Don't miss our weekend special. All smart beds are on sale. Save 50% on the Sleep Number 360 Limited Edition Smart Bed. Ends Monday. We are the first family of country music. 
gotta show the world your legacy will continue beyond me. I'll do anything to protect Miss family. Our family is all secrets and lies. What did you do? If there's a hell, I booked my ticket years ago. Just watch. Monarch, series premiere September 11th on Fox. Welcome back to Good Morning Maine. I'm Joe Cortez. The drought is having a negative impact on some blueberry farms. Farmer Doug Latham says his farm is expecting a lower haul of blueberries this season, and the blueberries they are getting are smaller in size. On the even year, which is what this is, um, our fields uh, generate roughly 45 to 50,000 pounds. This year, they're raking, uh, when we finish, we'll probably have raked 25,000 pounds. Um, we contribute that mainly uh, to the drought. Latham says an inch of rain every week until harvest is the ideal scenario for a pollinated blueberry crop. And in other news, nine rural Maine health care facilities were recently awarded federal grants. Matthew Dronzik tells us what the plan is moving forward. On Thursday morning, the United States Department of Agriculture announced $3.49 million in grants to help nine rural Maine health care facilities that were affected by the COVID-19 pandemic. USDA Director Rhiannon Hampson says she is excited to recognize the award winners. Yes, I'm thrilled to be able to bring everyone together to announce this investment in Maine. You know, we're reaching every single rural Mainer with some of these dollars. During the virtual event, award winners from six counties had the chance to express gratitude for funding and explain what they are going to do with it. First, uh, we are purchasing, uh, which is also updating and expanding our patient monitoring system. Uh, the second piece of this grant will allow us to purchase two new ventilators. The third piece of it will allow us to update our computers that our clinical bedside staff utilize. Money from the grants came from Emergency Rural Care Grant Program money coming from President Biden's American Rescue Plan that was signed last spring. The funds from each recipient range from 28000 to $1 million with various purposes, including building new facilities, getting new equipment, and improving access to food in rural areas. Hampson said that dispersing the money throughout the state helps with getting the best for Mainers. Is that we're trying to reach as many Mainers as possible with these investments. Among the attendees were Senator Angus King and a representative from Congresswoman Shelley Pingree, who recognized the award winners. This is the real uh, test of a successful program. That's one of the things that I was really happy to see uh, as these grants, as you're announcing these grants today. Hampson said she could not be any more proud of how much work her team put in to make this happen. The fact that they prioritized a brand new program, that they went, they learned, they understood, and then they rolled out a brand new program essentially a year after it was funded is pretty amazing. I mean, that's impressive for a federal agency, so my team could not have worked harder. The United States Department of Agriculture has announced that $47 million of its emergency rural health care grant will be given to 37 states as well as Guam and Puerto Rico. Reporting from Bangor, Matthew Jaronsic, ABC7 and Fox 22. A 44-year-old underwater sewage line near the mouth of Wells Harbor has been plagued with sewage line breaks over the past six months. Brad Rogers shows us how this problem is sending sewage straight into the harbor. That includes five breaks in the last month and two this week caused by stress fractures and boat strikes. Break number two and break number three all happen from boat strikes. Well, Sanitary District Superintendent Nick Rico says boaters who use this channel are not to blame. The sewage line keeps floating to the top. It's an old pipe. It floated. It's under stress. And once it loses its sand cover, there's nothing weighting it down except what we put in the water to weight it down. Right now, the sewage line is closed. Sewage is temporarily being pumped into these trucks so divers can assess the damage, which they hope to repair tomorrow. What we had planned for tomorrow was a fortified repair. I guess that stuff like that happens. Tiffany Thomas and her family vacation in wells every August, but with bacteria in the water, they don't plan on eating any of these crabs they caught. I'm glad that they're able to get out there and get it fixed. Hopefully it gets fixed sooner than later because I know a lot of people really like to enjoy this area of Wells. We do. We like to kayak and fish here. The city of Wells is planning to replace the entire underwater pipe this fall by drilling the harbor floor 
and permanently burying the line from one side of the harbor to the other. We plan on replacing the broken pipe with two new pipes under the harbor, directionally drilling from one side of the harbor under the harbor to the other side. We wouldn't be in the water at all. And don't go anywhere. Coming up after the break, it's that time of year again. Time to head back to school, but a new study is finding parents will be feeling it in their wallets. Plus, this morning, the latest on former President Trump's situation. We're learning more about what kind of information could have been printed on those documents. Don't go anywhere. We'll be back in 90 seconds. Durable, sturdy, stylish. Not Joe. Joe's Furniture. Joe's Furniture Warehouse in Newport is the place to find solid wood, built to last, made in main dressers, bureaus, and nightstands. Not your average Joe. Joe's Furniture Warehouse, Grogan Avenue in Newport. General Rental Center has been serving Central Maine with equipment and tool rentals for more than 30 years. Our extensive inventory contains everything you need to get the job done right. Our professional, knowledgeable staff is here to make sure that you get the highest quality rental items to complete your project and that they have been serviced and maintained to the highest standards. Power brooms to get that sand off the lawn, leaf blowers, brush chippers, stump grinders, aerial lifts, tillers, and excavators. We rent most everything. If you don't see it in our online catalog, please ask for it. If we don't have the item you need, we would be happy to help you find it. Breakdowns, collisions, things happen on the road unexpectedly. But here at Phil's Towing, we understand. With years of experience, our friendly professionals are here for you when you need them the most, no matter how big the task or vehicle is. At Phil's Towing, with our heavy-duty trucks, we guarantee an arrival time of 30 minutes or less and are available 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. Give us a call at Phil's Towing. Anytime, anywhere, anything. Hey, Bangor residents, the city of Bangor is offering up to $2,000 in grants for income-eligible single-family homeowners if you install a new Fujitsu heat pump in your home. And Valley Home Services is an authorized Fujitsu installer. Up to $2,000. Combine that grant with rebates from Efficiency Maine, and you could have a new Fujitsu heat pump installed by Valley Home Services at little to no cost. Don't miss this incredible offer, Bangor. Call Valley Home Services today to see if you qualify. Comfy, cozy, relaxing. Not Joe. Joe's Furniture. Joe's Furniture Warehouse in Newport is the place to find rockers, recliners, sofas, and easy chairs. Quality furniture. Affordable prices. Not your average Joe. Joe's Furniture Warehouse. Grogan Avenue in Newport. Home prices hit a new record as mortgage rates climb. A national medium single-family home average price is now $413,500, crossing the $400,000 mark for the first time. That's according to the National Association on Realtors. Home prices increased faster than middle and lower income wage gains. Mortgage rates resumed going back up. Freddie Mac Weekly data says 30-year fixed rates are now at 5.22 percent. Freddie Mac chief economists say the housing market is stabilizing as it, quote, transitions from the surge of activity during the pandemic. Going back to school is costing families more this year than in the past, and they may be cutting their spending elsewhere to make up the difference. Fox's Elijah Machado reports. It's that time of year again. Time to go back to school. With just a couple of weeks left until they head to the classroom, a whole lot of emotions for kids in Connecticut. I'm excited to make new friends. It's going to be a little hard because we're learning new stuff that might be harder. But parents will also feel this year a bit more on their wallets. On average, shoppers are expected to spend $168 more compared to 2019, according to the National Retail Federation. They anticipate families will spend an average of $864 in total on school items at a time when money is already tight. Groceries are all up, gas is up, water bill, electric bill, everything. As inflation rises, NRF says one third of consumers plan to cut back on spending in other areas so they can pay for school items. But families in East Hartford are getting some help. East Hartford Public Schools hosted a back to school rally Wednesday with 200 backpacks to give away. It's a relief. All filled with school supplies. Uh, there's a ruler, books. Journal. I feel happy so much because I got my fav favorite color backpack, teal. 
The backpacks and school supplies provided free of charge through donations from local businesses, organizations, and community partners. It's about 20 minutes past 8 o'clock. Let's get a look outside of our studio. It's about 65 degrees out there. Some of that fog is kind of dwindling out. You'll see a little more sunshine move in in a few hours, but we'll throw it over to meteorologist Devin Biggs with a full look at your Friday forecast. Hey, Joe, thank you very much. TGIF starting off with a little bit of patchy fog in a few spots this morning, mainly just the south and west of Bangor and other areas across our viewing area. Seeing a little bit of fog in a few spots this morning. It's very hit and miss, and we're going to start seeing this burning off, especially with the sun coming out soon. We'll be watching for clouds today as well as the cold front is passing through and maybe a few showers along the coast. So we had some showers last night and early this morning. Any rainfall we're getting definitely very welcome as we're still in drought across a good part of the state. But again, this cold front moving through. We have high pressure right behind it, though, so we're going to start seeing this cold front moving through. But clouds will move in from the south going toward the north end of our next system that will develop and then track off towards the north. So we'll have to keep an eye on that. Some rain chances will soon be on the way and a few rumbles of thunder as well. Water temperatures right now are in the middle 60s out there, so overall not too bad according to the buoys, but our average high temperature being 80 degrees will be in the upper 70s today and tomorrow middle 70s for you Sunday, back in the upper 70s Monday to Tuesday, then the lower 80s make a return again by Wednesday to Thursday, so overall not too far off from our average high, which is 80 degrees for this time of the year. Your muggy mirror, though, won't be too bad either. Dew points will be pretty decent moving forward, though, showing dew points that will be in that comfortable category for the next several days. So this is good news to report, though. No humid air on the way anytime soon. UV next forecast for today is at a 7 as considered high. That means a burn time of around 30 minutes, so hats, sunglasses, sunscreen, shade will be necessary as you do head out the door to avoid a bad sunburn. Moving forward for today, though, we'll get a mixture of clouds and some sunshine as well. It tries to get some rain going along the coast. It might be a little bit of a stretch. I think everyone will stay dry today under a partly cloudy sky, but more clouds moving from the south to the north later on tonight as our next system begins to approach. But no rain chances arriving until we head towards Saturday night and the parts of Sunday, especially to the eastern parts of our viewing area, though, some decent rain for a look in the fall with that. So well, that will be some good news as you do need the rain around here. So some areas seeing up to maybe half an inch or a little bit more, especially to the east before we're all finished up. But we do need the rain as well, especially to the south and west. Drought continues to exist across a good part of the viewing area. This drought monitor was released yesterday. So a forecast for today, upper 70s, partly cloudy, that north wind getting up to about 5 to 10 miles per hour. Later on tonight, middle 50 mostly cloudy north wind at about 5 to 10 miles per hour. For tomorrow, upper 70s, mostly cloudy, a slight chance for a thunderstorm with a north breeze at about 5 to 10 miles per hour. And your extended forecast. All right, another slight chance for storms on Sunday. After the storms that we'll see Saturday night, Monday we dry out, mostly cloudy, highs in the upper 70s, and upper 70s again on Tuesday with a mostly cloudy sky. Make the most of your waterfront with a Shoremaster dock system from Hammond Lumber Company. Shoremaster docks and boat lifts have been the trusted choice for decades. With Shoremaster, you get the expert product knowledge and first-class service you've come to expect from Hammond Lumber. Hammond is the country's largest stocking Shoremaster dealer, so you won't wait to get the dock system you want. Hammond delivers from any of their locations across Maine and New Hampshire with professional service after the sale. Your dream waterfront begins with Shoremaster from Hammond Lumber Company. You don't just go to work, you do the work, and it shows. You're committed to training and inspiring others. And you play as hard as you work. For that, you need a vehicle as strong as you are to get you where you want to go. Dedication, that's a Varney value, and one you'll find at Varney Buick GMC, Hogan Road, Bangor. The ABC7 at Fox 22 Ultimate Backyard Barbecue Giveaway is back. Five lucky winners will take home $100 in quality meats from W.A. Bean & Sons. In addition, one lucky winner will win a grand prize of a brand new Weber gas grill. All you need to do to become a winner is stop by and fill out an entry form at Herman Meadow Golf Club, Billings Road, Herman, Maine's most family-friendly golf course, or Chase's Family Restaurant and the Hideaway Lounge. Open for dine-in, takeout, or curbside. Make your summer barbecue ultimate with ABC7 and Fox 22. Judge and the Yankees battle Bogarts and the rival Red Sox. It's Baseball Night in America, Saturday at 7 Eastern on Fox. 
Hey, can we show you something? I'll allow it. Something new, like a new car. Well, this looks fun. And a new schedule. Hang on, we're keeping the road courses, right? Yeah, Chase, we got you. And a whole new reason to love what we love. Burnouts. Winning. Racing. I am NASCAR. The CDC is now relaxing COVID guidelines. The Center for Disease Control and Prevention say people no longer need to stay six feet from each other. They also have dropped a test to stay recommendation, which means students exposed to COVID-19 can test regularly instead of quarantining at home, allowing them to keep attending school. The changes come as an estimated 95% of Americans 16 and older have acquired some type of immunity from either infection, vaccination or both. The school guidance, there, um, there's no more section on quarantine. Instead, the recommendations around what to do if um, children or students or teachers or staff are exposed are the same as um, what we recommend in a community setting. And similarly, because we are no longer recommending quarantine, we're no longer including a section on test to stay. The average number of COVID cases and deaths reported have reportedly remained flat this summer. With about 100,000 cases a day and 30 to four or 300 to 400 deaths, the CDC adds that those who do test positive should isolate from others for at least five days, regardless of their vaccination status. Now on to that unprecedented search at former President Trump's Mar-a-Lago estate. Overnight, Trump announcing that he will not fight the Justice Department's motion to unseal documents related to the FBI's search of his Florida home. And now we're learning more about what kind of information could be printed on those documents. ABC's Ike Ajachi is in Washington with the latest. This morning, multiple sources now tell ABC News that the Justice Department and the FBI believe former President Trump continued to keep sensitive classified documents that had national security implications. Sources say the information in the documents was sensitive enough that authorities were eager to take it back into their possession. During the search at Mar-a-Lago, sources claim investigators were looking for material labeled special access, which is accessible only to people with the highest security clearances. Attorney General Merrick Garland addressing the search on camera for the first time Thursday, saying he signed off on the FBI's actions himself. I personally approve the decision to seek a search warrant in this matter. Second, the department does not take such a decision lightly. Garland also announced the department filed a court motion to unseal and make public two key documents, the search warrant and the so-called receipt, listing the items taken by federal agents, citing, quote, the public's clear and powerful interest in understanding what occurred. ABC News has learned Trump was subpoenaed for the documents earlier this year after a visit by a smaller group of FBI agents in early June. The search on Monday came only after the Justice Department concluded Trump had not turned over everything demanded by the subpoena. That could explain why the Department of Justice felt the need to go in there with a criminal search warrant. Maybe this is the explanation for why they had to use these more intrusive means, that because they tried to subpoena, they tried to get the documents, and they didn't get them. And overnight, the former president saying in a statement he won't oppose the release and implying he's going a step further by encouraging the immediate release of those documents. Former President Trump's attorneys have been given a copy of the warrant, which includes an inventory of the things that were taken. There is absolutely nothing preventing Trump from releasing those documents and making them public right now. Coming up on the second half of our show, after a two-year hiatus, Children's Day is coming back to the Hamden region. Plus, a historic Belfast landmark will be closing next month. We'll have this and more as Good Morning Maine continues. Hey, it's Eric from Green Bear 420. We've been in business since 2010 and going strong, so stop in and check us out. We specialize in glass art by over 100 local artists and even have live glass blowing. Plus, we carry incense, novelties, t-shirts, and hard-to-find items. We have tons of local products for the tie-dye wearing person in your circle of friends. Come see us at 531 Moosehead Trail in Newport. And remember, Green Bear 420, it's not just a store, it's a lifestyle. From the land to the sea, 
Chase's Family Restaurant is the place to be. Are you looking for a place to unwind after a long day? Then come check out our Hideaway Lounge. With a bar that's both upbeat and laid back. And it's the perfect atmosphere for anyone who wants to unwind after work. Or kick it up for the weekend with daily drink specials and a full dinner menu. You can fill up on a good time any night of the week. Thank you for being a part of our family. Here at Chase's Family Restaurant. There's one number you need to know. It's called Joe. It's Friday, August 12th of 2022. A nice day weather-wise coming up. We have a little history. The first Ford Model T rolled off the line 114 years ago today. And on this day in 1955, the minimum wage in the U.S. went from 75 cents to $1. Actor Casey Affleck is 47. Our weather guy, Devin Biggs, is celebrating his birthday today. And Mr. and Mrs. Will Farrell are celebrating their 22nd wedding anniversary. Today for national holidays, you have National Truck Driver Day. So get out there, wave to a truck driver, maybe be a kid again and ask him for, like, you know, the honking of the horn. We always love that. Let's turn it over to birthday boy Devin Biggs. He has another look at our forecast. Hey, Joe, thank you very much. Hope you're having a great Friday. Things looking pretty decent out there. We're watching a little bit of patchy fog developing in a few areas this morning, especially along the coast. So this on for the south and west of Bangor. Other areas seeing a little bit of fog as well this morning. We'll see that burning off as the sun rises, but we're also watching some clouds that have also developed as well. We had some rain showers that passed through last night and have since fizzled out. We're going to be watching the coast to see if a few rain showers try to get together today, but I think most of us will be staying dry nonetheless. Zooming things out, though, we have a cold front that is currently moving through. Temperatures will stay cooler in the 70s for the next several days. So overall, not too bad moving forward. Here's Futurecast for today. It tries to get a few showers going. That might be a little bit of a stretch. But otherwise, though, the big story will be later on tonight and tomorrow morning as clouds start to move in from the south going toward the north. Otherwise, though, the winds won't be too bad again today. Maybe mainly at around 5 to 10 miles per hour. Out of the northwest, going toward the south and east, maybe a little bit more gusts along the coast, especially as we head towards early Saturday morning as that next system begins to approach. But for today, though, not too bad out there. Upper 70s on the way under a partly cloudy sky, with the north wind getting up to about 5 to 10 miles per hour. Later on tonight, middle 50s for overnight low, mostly cloudy sky, with the north wind getting up to about 5 to 10 miles per hour. For tomorrow, upper 70s, mostly cloudy, a slight chance for a thunderstorm late, especially to the south and east, with the north wind getting up to about 5 to 10 miles per hour. In your hourly forecast moving forward, mixture of clouds and sun, temperatures in the upper 70s. Your full five day forecast is coming up. Joe? Thank you, Devin. Hamden is getting ready for its 41st annual Children's Day. After a two-year hiatus, Children's Day is coming back bigger than ever. The event kicks off Saturday at 7 a.m. The day will be filled with a variety of activities, ranging from pony rides and a parade to an airsoft shooting range. Now, the event will be held at George B. Weatherby School and is open to everyone, with or without children, looking for free family fun. Right now, especially with recovering from COVID, uh, in the hopes that you know we can continue back to what is the new normal, this event is what brings us together. It shows that we can we can still get out there, we can still be active, and it, it makes the community, especially with our our local sponsors that came in, it makes us feel like we are one big family again. The event is still looking for volunteers. If you have any interest, you can message the Hamden Children's Day Facebook page for more information. A historic Belfast landmark will be closing next month. On September 19th, Colonial Theater in Belfast will be closing its doors unless it can find a new owner. The current owners, Mike Hurley and his wife, Teresa Bagnardi, purchased the theater back in 95 and has since operated the business together. But now the couple have grown older. They believe it is time to pass the historic site to its next owner. Despite the sad news, Hurley is confident that the theater will draw interest from potential buyers. So this is just another page in the Colonials book. You know, we could have kept running it, uh, but we decided this would up the ante for people who are thinking about it, this becomes their time to act. Now, you can't go out with one more celebration, and before they do, the theater will show 10 days of free movies, and that starts September 9th. Two United Technologies Center students brought home the gold for Maine. Devin Dagnall has the story. 
Josh Gates and Keegan Nilsson represented United Technologies Center in Bangor and Maine at Skills USA. It's a national trades competition that challenges students in hundreds of trades. Josh and Keegan not only placed in the 3D visualization and animation competition, but won first place, making them the first students ever from the school to do so in the animation competition. When I heard that they won, I was like, wait, what? And it took me about, I would say about 30 seconds to process, and I'm like, okay, so this is really happening. Um, I knew that they did very well just seeing their end product, and it was just a matter of what they got. Josh and Keegan say they have no signs of slowing down after their victory. The duo plans on attending college in the fall to pursue careers in 3D art and animation and game art, respectively. I wouldn't say lucky, but definitely better off than some others when yeah. we know what we need to do, you know, what we want to do, and more or less how to get there. Like, we did so well is because, like, both of us were passionate about this beforehand. Mm -hmm. Like both of us went into this a year knowing this is what we wanted to do going out of school. Mm -hmm. So I think that was a big reason about how we made it to skills in the first place. In Bangor, Devin Dagnalt, ABC7, Fox 22. Back, it's like 24 in a matter of two days. And still to come here this morning in sports, the White Mamba was in Maine this week hosting some youth basketball camps. Hear from Brian Scalabrini, Dave Peck, and Tyler Cruz after the break. But first, here's a look at your forecast. Today, a high, of, a high of 78 degrees, partially cloudy skies. That sun should be out just a little bit. Tonight, it'll be mostly cloudy with a low of 54. And tomorrow, we are back up in the high 70s with mostly cloudy skies. Behind every keepsake, there's a memory. Behind every photo, there's a story. Behind Bouchard Cleaning and Restoration, there's people giving back by bringing back what was thought to be lost. The details, the time, and the expertise, all packaged up behind a name that Mainers have trusted for over 35 years. Statewide commercial and residential services. Bouchard Cleaning and Restoration. You keep the memories, we'll handle the rest. When the Coach House Restaurant wants to know the local forecast, they log on to foxbangor.com. The Coach House Restaurant, family dining at its best with fine home-cooked meals, delicious homemade desserts, and a large menu of tasty offerings for breakfast, lunch, or dinner. For a better center to serve you, Bangor Tire has moved to Herman. For a bigger selection of trusted brands, Bangor Tire has moved to Herman. And to better service your ride, no matter the size, Bangor Tire has moved to Herman. Master mechanics, free shuttle service, and the fair deals you deserve. Take Littlefield Avenue to Bangor Tire, beside Dice Arts in Herman. BangorTire.com. We're more than just a tire store. In life, many things matter. Black lives matter. Asian and Caucasian lives matter. Police officers and firefighters matter. Youngsters and senior citizen lives matter. Think about it. Every life matters. And it all begins first in Maine and everywhere when the protection of the unborn matters. Welcome to your family fun entertainment center, Movie Rocket Entertainment Galaxy. Movie Rocket has newly renovated cinemas, and the Starcade features all the best video and arcade games around. Movie Rocket, 268 Odlin Road in Bangor, and at MovieRocketBangor.com. The baddest superstars on the planet are unleashed in prime time. All new Friday Night Smackdown, tonight at 8 Eastern on Fox. Good morning, everyone. Well, Bangor Little League entered Thursday night just one win away from reaching the Little League World Series. The only team in their way? Massachusetts, who Bangor beat just a few days ago. Jacoby Harvey on the bump for Bangor here. Some trouble early, though. Smooth swing from Caden Ellis. Sends it to center field. Mike Marzelli comes all the way around to score. Mass strikes first. Then in the third, bases loaded for Marlboro. Jacob Landers with a sharp liner to right. That one just sneaks fair into the corner. A bases clearing triple makes it a 4-0 to zero game to the fourth now. Bangor looking to stay in it. Patrick Gite draws a bases loaded walk. That has Father Bed. There he is on his feet clapping. Why not? Bangor on the board. But this mass offense just too strong. Jaden Murphy 
breaks it open with a deep drive to left. No chance to get that one. A two-run bomb makes it a 7-1 to one match lead. They'd add a couple more to take it 10-1 to one the final as Bangor's dream season comes to an end. So not necessarily how they wanted it to end, but still, what an accomplishment to become a team that was just one win away from Williamsport. Certainly a lot you can hang your hat on. And also for the kids and the team that were down there, what an experience to have, something they will certainly never forget. For now, though, we will go to the basketball court because we've seen a number of local talent join Maine women's basketball in this past year alone. And as of Thursday, one of Bangor's best will join the club. Bangor rising senior Emmy Streams has committed to Orono, according to her post on social media. She'll join the Black Bears as a preferred walk-on with an opportunity to earn a scholarship the following year based on performance that, according to multiple sources, Streams will join Lexi Middlestat, Sarah Tallon, and JC Christopher as the main high school hoopers on Amy Vashon's roster. So congratulations to Emmy, and we will stay on hoops because this week, basketball players around the state got the experience of a lifetime, learning from former pro Brian Scalabrini, and we got the chance to chat with Scal about what it all means to him. Tyler Cruz has more. Scal, I mean, that's deep. That was deep. Scal, open and takes it. Scal, Scal, another one. Yeah! Maine is my... Favorite state for three months a year. Hoopers from around Maine this past week got to learn firsthand from an NBA champion. It's just like a surreal opportunity to, to learn from the best who, who've got to the level that you couldn't even dream of getting to. Brian Scalabrini, who played for the Celtics 2007 championship team, held camps in VZ, Ellsworth, and Standish, giving kids from all over the state the White Mamba experience. Here we go. Anytime I get a chance to spread you know, the same thing that message that the coaches had taught me growing up about hard work, taking every possession like it matters. I want to pass that on. Maybe it affects one kid, 10 kids, 100 kids. And even if he can just make them a little bit better, it's those small things that can give them the edge out on the court. I'm trying to make them just 1% better on, a, on something like this. Give them a tip here, give them a tip there. Teach them how to train a little bit different and just understand my perspective. He thinks of stuff that we wouldn't even think about thinking of because he's played at such a high level. You know, things like breathing or like your posture, things like that. While in Maine, Scal got the chance to work with some of the guys from Maine United coming off of their impressive showing at Peach Jam. And that includes Cooper Flagg, who Scal has been raving about ever since he met him and invited him down to Boston for a pickup game last year. His feel for the game is elite for an NBA level. Feel is something that's really hard to teach. And he came into our pickup games in Boston and he dominated. And that's hard for, at the time he was 14 years old. It's not an easy thing for a kid to do. Overall, for everyone at the camps this week, getting to have a former pro up in their neck of the woods really meant a lot. It's a real experience. I, you know, I think you know, him coming says a lot about himself and his character, you know, coming up to Bangor, Maine and, and helping us out. I'm Tyler Cruz with ABC7 Fox 22 Sports. All right, thank you, Tyler. Awesome to see Scal working with some of the main hoopers and giving them a little bit of knowledge. And we were at practice, and the things that he was saying to some of the guys there, like Landon Clark said, you don't even think of breathing while you're playing, just where to be, positioning. It's so much more than just shooting. And it was very clear observing one practice, what kind of impact he can have as a coach. So it was great to see him all over the state within the last week. Finally, though, it's been a lengthy road to recovery since Patriots running back James White suffered a hip injury last season. But after working Working all year to get back on the field, Sweet Feet is calling it a career. White took to social media on Thursday morning, thanking the entire organization, Patriots fans, and the region as a whole for their support over his eight-year career. The three-time Super Bowl champ will go down as one of the most likable players in recent memory and, of course, will be forever tied to the greatest comeback in NFL history, scoring three touchdowns, including the game winner right here in Super Bowl 51. The trusty third down back finishes his career with 25 touchdowns and just over 3,000 all purpose yards. So definitely a lot of people in that running back room, Damian Harris, Ramondre Stevenson, JJ Taylor, just to name a few, but very hard to replace a guy like James White in the locker room and on the field. We did that sports. We'll be right back after the break. Bath fitter doesn't just fit your bath. We fit your life. When a normal day is anything but normal, we fit your schedule with our unique tub over tub process installed in as little as a day. When high quality is the only quality that matters, we fit your standards with a lifetime guarantee. 
bath fitter. It just fits. Now, with $600 off a complete bath system, it fits your budget too. We've never had a promotion this big, so call or click now. A pool floaty is like whooping cough. It's not just for kids. Whooping cough is highly contagious for people of any age, and it can cause violent, uncontrollable coughing fits. Ask your doctor or pharmacist about whooping cough vaccination, because it's not just for kids. At Dorsey Furniture, we believe value means more than a great price. That's why we do what we do at Dorsey Furniture. That's why we're always updating our showroom with new pieces and new displays. That's why we're always eager to show you the latest furniture styles and newest fabrics. Because we believe that your home should be beautiful. Visit our showroom and experience Dorsey quality. Dorsey value, the Dorsey reputation. Dorsey Furniture, Route 1A in Holden and online at DorseyFurniture.com. At Firehouse Subs, we give you craveable subs that are piping hot and piled high. And a portion of every purchase helps give them the life-saving equipment they need. Order online or on the app for contactless pickup or delivery. Only at Firehouse Subs. You're five minutes away from a yummy, healthy treat. Kate Hudson shares her protein-packed super snack. Oh, my gosh. And Drew's news gets back to nature. Female California condors can reproduce entirely on their own with no help from a male. What? They're just like, I'm good, dude. I don't need you. Next, Drew. The Drew Barrymore Show, Friday at 3 on Fox 22. Welcome back. It's Friday, August 12th, and here's a look at some of the upbeat stories making headlines today. Members of the Chicago Children United for Ukraine made a massive Ukrainian flag on display in Chicago using 5,000 boxes of cereal. The cereal was then donated to a local food bank, and proceeds will all go to Ukraine. For the first time, eight children from Lviv, Ukraine, are performing on the big stage in New York City thanks to one actor turned active duty soldier. He raised the money to bring the group to the Big Apple. Their performance is also a fundraiser for humanitarian efforts in Ukraine. Cameras captured the first moments that a rare Rothschild giraffe was born at the Chester Zoo in the United Kingdom. Keepers have named the new calf Stanley. Giraffes are listed as vulnerable to extinction. And Argentinian scientists have discovered the first armored two-legged South American dinosaur, a species that lived in Patagonia nearly 100 million years ago. They've named it Jacopil Canicura, and they say it closely resembled iguanas. And those are some of the other stories making headlines on ABC7. The FAA says the number of drones in the U.S. is about to triple to more than 3 million, raising serious concerns about safety and national security. Fox's Evan Brown takes a closer look. When you don't have physical barriers, how do you control uh, access to different areas? It's a growing threat becoming more apparent every day. There are almost a million drones now flying in the U.S. The FAA says that number is about to triple and we may have to shoot some down. When you start to get into commercial areas, that's when it starts to become more of a challenge uh, where we have to figure out how do you control a stadium? The killing of 9-11 mastermind Ayman al-Zawahiri in a precision strike highlighted the growing use of drones by the military, but they're also the newest tools of criminals and terrorists. Now the aerospace contractor SAIC is working on adapting techniques and technologies that they've developed for the military to detect, track, and disable civilian drones. There's directed energy, like a high-energy laser. There's EW, or electronic wave, or microwave. And then there's, you know, the physical capture, so drum catchers. But it's not clear if the feds are moving fast enough to make sure the law keeps up with the technology. Right now, drones are regulated through a patchwork of legislation with no major federal oversight. And as drone usage ramps up, the question of who gets to play traffic cop will have broad implications. I think there's a lot of questions about uh, whether or not they can be done for commercial use. Uh, and we need to make sure that there are a set of rules for drones. Now, last month, the chair of the Senate Homeland Security Committee introduced a new bill that would give more authority to the feds to regulate drones. In Miami, Eben Brown, Fox News. And before the break, here's one final look at our full weather forecast with meteorologist Devin Biggs. Devin, good morning. 
Hey Joe, thank you very much. TGIF starting off with a little bit of patchy fog in a few spots this morning, mainly just to the south and west of Bangor and other areas across our viewing area. Seeing a little bit of fog in a few spots this morning. It's very hit and miss, and we're going to start seeing this burning off, especially with the sun coming out soon. We'll be watching for clouds today as well as the cold front is passing through, and maybe a few showers along the coast. So we had some showers last night and early this morning. Any rainfall we're getting definitely very welcome as we're still in drought across a good part of the state. But again, this cold front moving through. We have high pressure right behind it, though, so we're going to start seeing this cold front moving through. But clouds will move in from the south going toward the north. That of our next system now will develop and then track off towards the north. So we'll have to keep an eye on that. Some rain chances will soon be on the way and a few rumbles of thunder as well. Water temperatures right now are in the middle 60s out there. So overall, not too bad according to the buoys. But our average high temperature being 80 degrees will be in the upper 70s today and tomorrow. Middle 70s for you Sunday. Back in the upper 70s Monday to Tuesday. Then the lower 80s make a return again by Wednesday to Thursday. So overall, not too far off from our average high, which is 80 degrees for this time of the year. Your muggy beer, though, won't be too bad either. Dew points will be pretty decent moving forward, though, showing dew points that will be in that comfortable category for the next several days. So this is good news to report, though. No humid air on the way anytime soon. UV index forecast for today is at a 7 as considered high. That means a burn time of around 30 minutes, so hats, sunglasses, sunscreen, shade will be necessary as you do head out the door to avoid a bad sunburn. Moving forward for today, though, we'll get a mixture of clouds and some sunshine as well. It tries to get some rain going along the coast. It might be a little bit of a stretch. I think everyone will stay dry today under a partly cloudy sky, but more clouds moving from the south to the north later on tonight as our next system begins to approach. But no rain chances arriving until we head towards Saturday night and the parts of Sunday, especially to the eastern parts of our viewing area, though. Some decent rain for a look in the fall with that. So well, that will be some good news as you do need the rain around here. So some areas sing up to maybe half an inch or a little bit more, especially to the east before we're all finished up. But we do need the rain as well, especially to the south and west. Drought continues to exist across a good part of the viewing area. This drought monitor was released yesterday. So a forecast for today, upper 70s, partly cloudy, that north wind getting up to about 5 to 10 miles per hour. Later on tonight, middle 50s, mostly cloudy north wind at about 5 to 10 miles per hour. For tomorrow, upper 70s, mostly cloudy, a slight chance for a thunderstorm with a north breeze at about 5 to 10 miles per hour. And your extended forecast. All right, another slight chance for storms on Sunday. After the storms that we'll see Saturday night, Monday we dry out, mostly cloudy. Highs in the upper 70s and upper 70s again on Tuesday with a mostly cloudy sky. Inflation, a broken supply chain, and high gas prices. Mainers everywhere are facing tough decisions about rising costs. Growing up as part of a small family business in Leeds, I learned what a struggling economy does to small businesses, jobs, and to working class people. And serving as a Marine in Afghanistan and Iraq taught me to stand strong for what's right in the face of adversity. I'm Jared Golden, and that's why in Congress, I'm an independent voice for you, taking on my own party to stand up for Maine families. I was the only Democrat to vote against trillions of dollars of President Biden's agenda because I knew it would make inflation worse. I stood with law enforcement against defunding the police. I support cutting the gas tax and increasing domestic oil production. I'm working to lower prescription drug costs and standing firm against any cuts to Social Security and Medicare. I'll always be an independent fighter for you. I'm Jared Golden, and this is my family. I approve this message because when it comes to doing what's right for your family, I'll never back down. Check one, check two. The store's appearance may have changed throughout the years, but its dedication to our community and families has not wavered. We will still welcome you with a smile and top-notch service. If you need coffee. Check. Tasty treats. Check. Freshly made pizza. Check. Or wine and spirits. Check. Stop by and fill up your tank and check us out. A summer dessert that'll satisfy your sweet tooth without weighing you down? Sounds impossible. Well, it's not. The dessert we're sharing today is refreshing and light, 
yet still tastes decadent. It's a cross somewhere between lemon bars and the creamiest cheesecake you've ever had. Oh, and the best part, there's no baking required. We start by combining some graham cracker crumbs, a bit of sugar, and some melted butter. Once that's mixed well, we pat it into our baking dish to create a crust. We'll put this in the fridge for a bit to firm up while we make our filling. And for that, all we do is beat together some cream cheese with sweetened condensed milk until it's smooth. Then we add in some lemon juice and some lemon zest. And to make this nice and light, we fold in some whipped topping. Now we spoon this over our crust. And here's a little tip. Gently shake the pan to help level it off before popping it back in the fridge to chill. Right before serving, top it with a bit more lemon zest and a few berries and you're good to go. One bite and you'll know why I think this might be summer's ultimate dessert. To get the recipe for our lemon refrigerator bites, all you need to do is visit our website. This way you'll be ready no matter who stops by this summer. And if you never reveal where you got the recipe, that's okay. It'll be our little secret. I'm Howard in the Mr. Food Test Kitchen, where today we found a lemony cool way for you to say, ooh, it's so good. The sexual abuse allegations against Army Hammer will be examined in a new documentary. Robert Downey Jr. takes on a new creative platform and more. Here's Fox's Ashley Dvorkin with the latest from the Hollywood Nation. Fine serves a deadly meal, Martin tells his story, and Downey Jr. expands his resume in the Hollywood Nation. Robert! Robert Downey Jr. has joined a new platform. The Oscar winner and his wife Susan Downey team up to produce the investigative podcast series The Sunshine Place. The show examines the story of Synanon, the California-based experimental drug rehab facility and community that morphed into a dangerous and violent cult. The first two episodes are currently available, with new episodes dropping every Wednesday through September 21st. Steve Martin will be at the center of a new documentary. According to The Hollywood Reporter, a two-part film about the iconic comedian's life and career is being developed for Apple TV+. He would say things, God, you're so perfect. Army Hammer's life story and dark secrets are also getting the spotlight in today's first looks. Discovery Plus released a trailer to House of Hammer, a three-part docu-series focusing on the sexual abuse allegations brought against the disgraced actor. The show examines how his family's troubled history may have contributed to his downfall and features interviews from his alleged victims and his aunt Casey Hammer. It premieres September 2nd. Tonight will be madness. And in the new trailer for the culinary horror comedy The Menu, Anya Taylor-Joy and Nicholas Holt play a wealthy couple whose dining experience at an exclusive restaurant on a remote island turns into a nightmare when the chef serves up shocking surprises. Ray Fine stars as the sinister cook. I have to know if you're with us or with them. In Hollywood, Ashley Dvorkin, Fox News. And the price to stream Hulu and Disney Plus is going up. Disney says it's going to be raising the price of Disney Plus to $10.99 a month. That's up from the current price of $7.99 a month. The company says it wants to restructure its pricing options. Disney is also increasing the cost of Hulu. The ad-free version will go to $14.99 a month, up from $12.99 a month. Hulu Live bundles with ad-supported Disney Plus and ESPN Plus also will increase in price. Disney reported adding 8 million subscribers to Disney Plus last quarter. And single-serving desserts are gaining in popularity. Reports say that's because the average household size is now one to two people. Dessert makers are creating customized desserts to capitalize rather than making larger single-flavor bulk options. Cakes may come in specialty flavors but may also be a single-serving Flavors could also be nostalgic, and treats can come with some fun shapes. Now, this new approach also means less food waste, as someone may eat only one of the desserts they purchase, but not the entire cake. Dessert does sound good on a Friday. But that does it for the final hour of our show. Thank you for watching. We'll be back here at 6 a.m. tomorrow morning for the latest in local news. If you missed anything, check out all these stories at foxbangor.com or all of our social media platforms. ABC 7 News at Noon with Susan Farley is coming up and tonight at 6.